Yeah, so it started out as some, you know, just throwing ideas out there, and as we were discussing um, how to put on concerts, we thought about how we wanted to kind of do something a little bit um, different than on the stage where you perform to the audience, but don't actually really make a connection with them mm -hmm. as, as often. So, and wanted to make that connection be one of the focal points of the group. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the name, Fourth Wall Music, as a reference to a, a dramatic term for the wall between the performers and the audience. And so as we're programming, we're trying to think of all sorts of ways that we can get rid of that wall, whether it's through um, conversation and, and description of what we're playing, um, audience participation. Uh, we've worked with a number of artists in different fields in, in Windsor and, and trying to reach out, out to them. And um, yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun. McIntosh, um, and let's see, I'm the artistic director of the group, although we've all played pretty important roles. Um, I have a master's in music from the University of Michigan, and have played in a number of orchestras in southern Michigan, as well as in the Windsor Symphony. Um, I teach at the University of Windsor and at a college in the States, Hillsdale College, and just put together a myriad of different things that go into a career as a musician. Great. My name is Nadine Delery. I've been in Windsor for eight years now. Um, I'm still working in the States where I'm principal cellist of the Michigan Opera Theatre Orchestra and teachers in the States. Um, in Windsor, I have been known, especially last year, with the Pat and Emilia Opera project. Mm -hmm. um, I am a substitute player for the Windsor Symphony, which uh, something I will enjoy a lot. Uh, regarding Fourth Wall, I am more in charge of the public relations side of the, the project. Uh, so making sure that the, the concerts are, are announced everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> and people are, can, can come to it. Delury, uh, Trevor Pittman, mm -hmm. and Faith Schofield, and Liesl Depp. Faith is an uh, oboe player in the Windsor Symphony, Liesl is a flutist. Trevor plays clarinet as well as works for the university. Mm -hmm. And we felt that in Windsor, um, of course, there has been some chamber music concerts, but there was no series of uh, music concerts that was something to, mm -hmm. to feel. Mm. Generally we've done our performances here at the Joy Theatre mm -hmm. in the Capitol Theatre um, and are grateful to the Windsor Symphony for hosting us here. We are really excited about creating the Capitol Theatre as a hub for arts mm -hmm. in downtown Windsor. So we've yeah, we, we would like to keep this as our home. We are doing a few concerts this season at Mackenzie Hall, um, primarily because they have a beautiful piano, mm -hmm. and some of our music requires the piano. I think one of the key aspects is the um, variety of the programming. Um, to reference a few of our past season concerts, we've had concerts with poets, with visual artists with painters, with dancers, um, and each program definitely includes some of the um, solid classical music repertoire pieces that we love so much, but we're not afraid to kind of reach out of the box and also do some things along more along the lines of pop, uh, blues, Celtic, folk. Improvisation. Improvisation. <laughs> Uh, in some ways, as a, um, another way that we can reach out to folks who may not be um, as familiar with classical music, mm -hmm. who may even shy away from classical music, thinking mm -hmm. it has, um, I don't know, 
more of an elitist or, or boring connotation. And um, I, we found that if we can just open the doors a little bit, share a little bit more, um, educate a little bit more, people are so much more engaged mm -hmm. and are able to really uh, enjoy that music on a personal level. Mm -hmm. In order to prepare a classical music concert, it takes hours and hours and hours of practicing mm -hmm. by yourself in your little practice room. And um, I think I personally was just kind of looking for a little bit more than just that experience where you perform, you share, it's kind of a black audience, you don't see that, you know, you don't see anything out there, and um, you stand up and you smile, <laughs> and that's the end. So for me, I just, I really enjoy hearing about what other people are experiencing and uh, trying to create more of a collaborative aspect. In that and sense. we always present pieces to the audience so they know what they're about to, to, to hear, uh, a few points to, to listen to, so. Mm -hmm. For example, that music that you just, we were just playing, The Swan, just before we played it, <laughs> we had this little conversation where she said, oh, I guess I'm the swan, what are you? <laughs> oh, I guess I'm the water, oh, okay. You know, so even at, you know, letting them into, getting some insight as far as what we're thinking about when we're creating the piece of art. And also for them to hear our own voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of, mm -hmm. when I go to a concert, I hear that person play, but I never hear the sound of their voice. It's strange nowadays. That's true. Because more often, Performers. I know it's difficult because to come from you know your your mind as a speaker and then to go back to your instrument, but we are kind of getting used to it too. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is really a weird feeling when I see someone and I will never hear their voice. Right. Or you don't know anything. <laughs> because about we are we are a whole. We are <laughs> exactly. We are human beings who are exactly. sharing our music. But uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very true. I mean, music is such a strange. It's a beautiful, beautiful art, but different in the sense that there is no vocal aspect, there aren't words that go along. It's this gift that's shared and experienced with the performers and the audience without having to say anything. Mm -hmm. um, but just definitely, like you say, giving it some kind of personality, um, humanism. Well, we have, ex like we were saying, we've experimented with some different things in our past concerts. Um, one example was during the Words and Music concert that we did with Tom Dilworth, the poet. Um, we opened up to the audience um, the option to write a line of, or to, to come up with a line of poetry right there on the spot. They would stand up, say the words, and then we would um, try to reflect what they were talking about in music. And I was really nervous about this project because I'm thinking, who's going to stand up and say it? Nobody's going to say it. Well, it ended up going on and on, and the audience kept it. They're like, oh, you know, little kids are getting up and saying lines of poetry, and it was, it was received much more enthusiastically than I had anticipated. So, um, in general, I think people have really enjoyed the, um, the interaction. Yeah, when Nadine and uh, Vaughn, the two artists, came and uh, spontaneously from the audience created their, their, their piece. Um, so the audience could also draw and some kids That's too. That's right, yeah. And, we uh, had pieces of paper and pencils, so they were kind of responding to the music mm -hmm. in their own way. And, and we do definitely um, welcome families and have ha enjoyed ha having a, 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 a number of young children at our concerts too. Mm -hmm. That particular project, I mean, Anne, of course, who organizes H&M, is just fantastic to work with. Mm -hmm. um, we actually discussed how we were going to collaborate in, in, in different ways. Were they going to respond to us? Were we going to change our tempos for them? And it ended up kind of finding a little bit of a, a middle ground. Um, we gave him uh, the recordings of our music to begin with, and he started off with a choreography. Um, we were doing a number of things, namely uh, Tango by mm -hmm. Astro Piazzolla. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what else did we play? The Sonata by uh, Damas, a French composer, two very different pieces. 
Um, but I think that having the visual um, component to what we're doing, um, to what we were playing, again, it was, it was a way for the audience to get more engaged into the music itself. Mm -hmm. So um, adding visual components to our programs is also one of those things that we think about each, for each concert. Mm -hmm. And this past year we've taken, it's just the ball kept rolling and we've taken the natural steps to um, uh, file our papers of incorporation. We're headed toward becoming a nonprofit. Um, we've put together a, a board who's really enthusiastic about the project, reaching out to people in the community that aren't musicians mm -hmm. to become involved. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're musicians and artists, and so becoming marketers <laughs> and business people <laughs> is, is all new for us, so um, we've, we've learned a lot. <laughs> A musician can get involved by contacting me, <laughs> and we have we have a number of, of people who are interested in working with programs in the future. Every concert, we encourage them to uh, give us their contact information and get on our email list. Um, and honestly, we are very eager to get any feedback from audience members that, um, about concerts they'd like to hear, uh, what they thought about the performances, and have changed our performances based on some of the feedback that they we're working on our charitable status, um, and uh, we'll be able to issue receipts retroactively starting January, and we have an excellently designed donation page on our website, uh, fourthwallmusic.org. Um, Anyone who would be interested in volunteering, you know, to um, hand out posters around town, take ten posters and put them up. Uh, or there's, yeah, there are a number of ways that we can use help. <laughs> well, our first concert features the guitar, mm -hmm. and we're going classical Stephen Deering from the University of Windsor. Um, to Blues Christian Bay, who's an 18-year-old who's just phenomenal. He's going to come play some blues. Um, and it will, so we'll, we'll be featuring pop music, South American music in that particular concert. Um, we have what we call the Artist Unmasked, where we're featuring not only Beethoven as a man and what was going on in his life at the time, but um, the performers who will be playing Beethoven as well as some of their um, favorites. So I'm going to interview them and give, give a little insight to the audience as far as what it is to be a musician and, and the life. Uh, we have a, a percussion concert, the Big Bang, that um, will, yeah, again, variety. I, we found that if we can just open the doors a little bit, share a little bit more, um, educate a little bit more. People are so much more engaged mm -hmm. and are able to really uh, enjoy that music on a personal level. Mm -hmm.